Good day and good evening, and welcome to the Green Tree Hospitality Group Limited fourth quarter and fiscal year 2019 earnings conference call. All participants will be in listen-only mode. Should you need assistance, please signal a conference specialist by pressing the star then zero on your telephone keypad. After today's presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your telephone keypad. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. Please note this event is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to Rene Vengerstein. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Andrew. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Greentree's earnings release was distributed earlier today and is available on our IR website at ir.998.com, as well as on PR Newswire services. As a reminder, we also posted a PowerPoint presentation that accompanies our comments today to the same IR website. On the call today from Green Tree are Mr. Alex Xu, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Selina Yang, Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Megan Huang, Director of IT Department, and Mr. Nikki Jang, IR Manager. Mr. Xu will present the company's Q4 and full year 2019 performance overview, followed by Ms. Wang, who will discuss business operations, and Ms. Yang will then discuss financials and guidance. They will be available to answer your questions during the Q&A session that follows. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that this conference call contains forward-looking statements within the meaning of Section 21E of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, as amended, and as defined in the U.S. Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These forward-looking statements can be identified by terminology such as may, will, expects, anticipates, aims, future, intends, plans, believes, estimates, continue, target, is or likely to, going forward, confident, outlook, and similar statements. Any statements that are not historical facts, including statements about the company and its industry, are forward-looking statements. Such statements are based upon management's current expectations and current market and operating conditions and relate to events that involve known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors, all of which are difficult to predict and many of which are beyond the company's control, which may cause the company's actual results, performance, or achievements to differ materially from those in the forward-looking statements. You should not place undue reliance on these forward-looking statements. Further information regarding these and other risks, uncertainties, or factors is included in the company's filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. All information provided, including the forward-looking statements made during this conference call, are current as of today's date. The company does not undertake any obligation to update any forward-looking statement as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise, except as required under applicable law. It is now my pleasure to introduce our Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Alex Xu. Mr. Xu, please go ahead. Thank you, Rene. And thanks, everyone, for joining our fourth quarter earnings call today. Greentree's eighth consecutive quarter of solid operating the financial performance. Let's start with slide number five. By the end of December 2019, we had to grow our geographic coverage to 339 cities across China with 3,957 hotels in operation, up 43.5% over the prior year. Compared with the fourth quarter of 2018, total revenues in Q4 grew 20.4% to 289.4 million RMB, 
net income increased 48.9% to 74.5 million RMB. And non-core, and a non-gap EBITDA rose 11.4% to 162.3 million RMB. For the full year, total revenues grew 20.6% over 2018 to 1.1 billion RMB. Net income increased 17.9% to 437.8 million RMB. A non-GAAP adjusted EBITDA rose 12.1% to 594.1 million RMB. Our operating performance remains solid. Our blended ADR increased 3.6% year-over-year to 170 RMB, while our occupancy rate had a small 2.2% decrease to 78.2%. That's primarily due to the consolidation of the urban hotels. And the floor power increased 0.9% to 133 RMB. For the full year, blended ADR increased 3.6% over 2018 to 170 RMB. Occupancy slightly decreased by 1.2% to 80.9% and the rep power increased 2.0% to 137 RMB. We further grew our market presence across China. In the fourth quarter of 2019, we opened 190 hotels, and we ended the year with 949 hotels in our pipeline, up 121% year over year. We also completed the consolidation of Argyle Hotels Management Group in in Q2, and the Urban Hotel Group in December 2019. Both chains are highly complementary to Green Tree's hotel portfolio and the geographic coverage. We strengthened our cooperation with the Ginkgo Education Group providing entrepreneurial training to graduates majoring in hotel management. Our own Cosmos College set up more than 1,700 targeted training courses to accelerate talent development within our company, and especially during the uh, prepared for this uh, COVID-19 crisis. We continued to roll out our F&B concept by branding F&B services into our hotels to turn them into profit centers and attract additional guests for our hotels. Regarding marketing, we are formulating joint marketing programs with several major banks to attract local corporate clients and high value business travelers. And throughout the year, We were continuously upgrading the functionality of our IT infrastructure and our mobile-based applications to improve customer experience. Let's now turn to slide seven. I think it is important to say a few words about the impact of COVID-19. Thanks to the government's efforts to to contain the spread, The outbreak is coming under control in China, but the measures that had to be taken, including the lockdown of cities, business closures, and restrictions on travel, disrupted the operation of our hotels. A number of them were forced to close, and a number of hotels were used to house medical staff, volunteers, and quarantined travelers. All of this had severely impacted our performance in Q1 2020, and we expect revenues to be down 30 to 35% year over year. On a like-to-like basis, revenue for the first quarter will be down in the high 30%. That's excluding the impact from the newly consolidated entities from Urban Hotel Group. Please turn to slide eight. All along, our number one priority has been to keep every guest and our staff safe and healthy. To that effect, 
we took a number of substantial measures. First, we tightened up our already high health, safety, and hygiene standard and protocols. Second, we provided fee waivers and financial support to our franchisees. Third, we created a safe and comfortable isolation space. We also called for self-quarantine employees and guests. And fourth, we provided for free COVID-19 health insurance for our guests. With this assistance from Green Tree, our franchisees were ready to resume business operations when shelter in place was to be properly lifted. As a result, today, 93% of our hotels are back in operation and occupancy exceeded 50%, up substantially from the low of 21.9% on, Gen on January 31st. And most importantly, none of our guests or employees have been affected by the virus in our hotels. I am particularly grateful to our franchisees, employees, and partners for the hard work in this battle with COVID-19. The combination of our joint swift and tactical response, our support and assistance to our franchisees, our well-trained staff, and our sound business model helped Green Tree successfully na navigate these difficult times. In fact, many of our hotels came through with better occupancies and ADRs than their comparable sets. I will now pass the call over to our IT director, Megan Huang. Megan, please go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Moving to slide 10, at the end of the fourth quarter, we operated 3,957 hotels, 43.5% higher than a year ago. 34 of these hotels were leased and operated, or LO hotels, and 3,923 were franchised and managed, or FM hotels. While the mid-scale segment remains the core of our business with almost 65% of our hotels. Last year, we expanded more into both the higher end and economy segments of the market. By the end of 2019, the number of hotels in the mid to upscale and the luxury segments increased to 7.2% of the total portfolio, and the economy segment grew to 28% with the consolidation. On slide 11, you can see that in the fourth quarter, we opened 190 hotels, compared to 224 in Q4 2018 down 15.2%. 29 were in the mid to upscale segment, 81 in the mid-scale segment, and 80 in the economy segment. 14 were in tier one cities, 37 in tier two cities, and the remaining 139 were in tier three and other cities in China. Meanwhile, we closed 41 hotels, nine due to brand upgrade. 20 due to non-compliance with our brand and operating standards, and 12 due to property-related issues. So net-net, we added 149 hotels to our portfolio. Slide 12 shows the growth in our pipeline of new hotels. As you can see, our pipeline increased from 652 on September the 30th to 949 on December the 31st more than double our pipeline at the end of 2018. Around 38% of these hotels are in the mid-scale segment, about 37 in the economy se sector, and around 25% in the mid to upscale and the luxury segment, as we continued our accelerating expansion into the mid to upscale and the luxury segments. Slide 14 shows that the fourth quarter saw improvements in operating performances across the board. Our FM hotel's occupancy rate dipped slightly from 80.7% to 78.4%. ADR improved 
3.9 percent to 169 RMB, and the red power increased 0.9 percent to 133 RMB. Slide 15 shows the same operating metric for the full year. Our FM hotels occupancy decreased from 82.3 percent to 81.1 percent. ADR improved 3.6 percent to 169 RMB. Red power increased 2.1 percent to 137 RMB, and our LO hotels ADR was up 3.1 percent to 211 RMB. Slide 16 shows the quarterly red power trend. Also, red power for our LO. Although red power for our LO hotels decreased 1.2% year over year to 135 RMB, red power for our FM hotels increased 0.9% to 133 RMB. With that, I pass the call over to our CFO, Selena Yang. Thank you, Megan. Please turn to slide 18. During this quarter, combined total revenues grew 20.4% year-over-year to 289.4 million RMB. This growth was primarily due to four factors. The opening of 190 new FM hotels, improved red power, growth in our royalty membership program, and consolidation of urban and agro groups into our financial statements. Growth was partially offset by the renovation of six LO hotels. Total revenues from FM hotels rose 20.3% to 220.9 million RMB, with total revenue from LO hotels rose 20.9% to 68.6 million RMB. During the year, Total revenue rose by 20.6% to 1,091.8 million RMB. And total revenue from FM hotels was 838.4 million RMB, up 21.0% year over year. And total revenues from LO hotels was 253.4 million RMB up 19.2% year-over-year. Slide 19 shows the total operating costs were 92.6 million RMB, up 28.7% year-over-year. This increased the cost, a main expansion cost for our FM hotels, higher depreciation and amortization higher one-time renovation costs for six LO hotels, and operating costs of Argo and Urban. Excluding the impact from newly consolidated entities Argo and Urban, hotel operating costs of this quarter increased 13.2% year over year. For the full year, hotel operating costs was 338.8 million RMB, up 23.5%. Selling and marketing expenses in the fourth quarter were 23.2 million RMB, up 66.9% year over year. This increase was mainly made up of incentive bonuses and the marketing and the other costs associated with brand promo promotion and with Argo and Urban. Excluding Argo's and Urban's expenses and extraordinary costs, selling and marketing expenses in this quarter increased 12.2%. And for the year, selling and marketing expenses were 85.0 million RMB, up 79.3%, from the prior year. General and administrative expenses were 79.6 million RMB, up 212.4% year over year. This was due to increased IT research and development costs, legal 
due diligence expenses, M&A and other consulting fees, and Argyle and Urban. Additionally, that debt provision of investment in Yu Zhenlong was accrued in the fourth quarter. Considering that Yu Zhenlong focuses on providing fast food to travelers in the railway station and its business was seriously impacted by the traffic restriction and COVID-19. Also due to the outbreak of COVID-19, a bad debt provision of rental income from sublease was accrued. Excluding the bad debt provision, GNA from Argo and Urban and one time fees, our GNA expenses in this quarter increased by 21.1%. GNA expenses for the full year were 185.0 million RMB, up 94.2% over the year of 2018. Overall, combined total operating costs and expenses for the quarter grew 67.9% year over year to 198.5 million RMB. Excluding Argo and the Urban, provision for bad debt and one time fees, our combined total operating costs and expenses increased 12% compared, compared with one year ago. On slide 12, 20, gross profit grew 16.9% year over year to 196.8 million RMB. Gross margin decreased slightly from 70.1% to 68.0%. Net income increased 48.9% to 74.5 million RMB. And net margin improved from 20.8% to 25.8%. For the year, gross profit grew 19.3% year over year to 741.6 million RMB. And net income grew 17.9% year over year to 437.8 million RMB. On slide 12, 21, you can see that adjusted EBITDA increased 11.4% year-over-year year to 162.3 million RMB. And adjusted EBITDA margin decreased to 56.1%. Um, our core net income increased 15.8% to 129.9 million RMB, and the core net margin was 44.9%. For the year, adjusted EBITDA increased 12.1% year over year to 594.1 million RMB, with a margin of 54.4%. And core net income increased 16.7% year over year to 480. 2.7 million RMB. Now turn now to slide 12. Net income per ADS, per basic and diluted, increased 51% to 0.75 RMB. That's equal to 11 cents US dollars. While core net income per ADS, basic and diluted, not debt, increased 15.1% to 1.27 RMB, that's equal to 19 cents US dollars. For the year, net income per ADS, basic and diluted, improved by 15.8% to 4.34 RMB, equal to 62 cents US dollars. While core net income per ADS, basic and diluted, net debt, increased by 13.8%. 4% to 4.73 RMB, that's equal to 69 cents US year dollar. Let's now look at slide 12, 33. During this quarter, our operating net cash inflow was 118.5 million RMB. As of December 31st, we had cash 
and a tax equivalent of 1.8 billion RMB. Additionally, thanks to our lenders, we have 330 million RMB of untapped low interest credit lines to allow us to assist our franchisees. On slide 24, as Alex mentioned, COVID-19 had a significant impact on our business. So as a result, we expect total revenue to decline 30 to 35 percent for the first quarter of 2020 and to decline 10 percent to 15 percent for the full year 2020 compared to 2019. However, we still anticipate that we will pay a cash dividend of US dollars 15 cents to US dollars 25 cents per ADS in the year of 20, 2020. We have received inquiries from some of our investors regarding our legal structure. So I would like to clarify that Green Tree has been from the day one a holding on the foreigner enterprise in China. And as such, our shareholders have direct ownership in all our operating entities, except 168.com that cannot be owned by foreigners on a Chinese law. However, 168.com accounts for only 1% of our revenues. That concludes our prepared remarks. Operator, we are now ready to begin the Q&A session. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. If at any time your question has been addressed and you would like to withdraw your question, please press star then two. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. The first question comes from Justin Kwok of Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Um, hi, uh, Alex and everyone. Uh, thanks for taking my question, and I hope everyone is, uh, stays healthy and well um, in, in the evening. Uh, perhaps I'll get off with uh, three questions. I'll just uh, lay them out now, and then you can just take it uh, one by one. Uh, the first question is, um, I want to get a sense on how management uh, derives the uh, 10 to 15 percent decline in the full year revenue. Uh, in terms of what kind of uh, ramp up in your operations into Q2 or into the second half of the year that you are anticipating, some color on the occupancy or refer changes would be very helpful. And at the same time, uh, are you anticipating further uh, franchisees? waiver or support into the rest of the year, or you do expect the franchisee's uh, number to move it back to a normal size. So that's uh, the first question on how to get to the uh, revenue growth. Uh, the second question is on the cost side. So um, it seems that you got some one-off costs related to all the uh, M&As and the uh, one-off expenses, uh, so your margins was uh, declined on year-for-year -year basis. Uh, can you just um, kind of uh, walk through us some pro forma numbers if you exclude these one-off what would the margins be? And into like 2020, given now you would have been in a full year number with these new acquisition, where would the margins kind of roughly at? And the last one is uh, on the M&A. Uh, can you remind, I'm not sure whether you, you mentioned it in the call, I might have missed it. What would be your capacity now for M&A uh, as, uh, as of the end of the year? And uh, what kind of targets you're looking, well, I mean, uh, what kind of uh, opportunities you're looking at the, at this stage? given uh, potentially there is some liquidity uh, squeeze event in China, are you turning even more, um, or are you seeing more aggressive um, targets you can do now, uh, given now you have uh, you started off with very good financial position into the year? I'll stop here, thank you. Thank you, Justin, this is Alex. And uh, likewise, the best and be safe to everybody on the phone call. Uh, with regard to how we arrived to 10 to 15 percent at the guidance for the year and that's based on our ramp up period we think there's a continued ramp up period of during the second quarter 
and the third quarter and all the way to the um, fourth quarter. So the recovery will not be, um, you know, the immediately like the same, will take the same times as it go down to go up, will take a little bit longer. But the detailed number I'll have um, Selena to um, address her rationale to arriving that 10 to 15 percent. Selena. Thank you, Alex, and thank you for Jesse's question. Um, the four year forecast uh, was made by adding up quarterly forecast. And for each uh, quarterly forecast, that is driven by two major operational metrics uh, number of newly opened hotels and the uh, growth of rental. Uh, first quarter, we experienced the most difficult time and with our occupancy. Uh, um, that's about 60, uh, that's about 62 percent of our normal condition. And as you can see, um, by the end of March, our occupancy rate has hit uh, more than 60 percent. Yeah, and uh, and our uh, afterwards the occupancy rate climbed up as epidemic was under good control. So during the February and the March, our occupancy rate doubled from the lowest level, and uh, uh, that's why we hit the um, exceeded more than 50 percent. And in our forecast in the second quarter, uh, our occupancy rate will continue to recover gradually. And, and uh, by the end of uh, the second quarter, uh, the occupancy rate uh, is, is most likely to uh, exceed uh, 80 percent. And in the third quarter, and the occupancy rate will remain the highest level of the four year 2012-20. But because the last year, third quarter, uh, is also the hottest season during the, for, the full year. So, so yeah, that means the year-over-year year growth speaking, there's a still year-over-year growth, year growth decrease, uh, but the absolute value will be the highest uh, of this year. And in the fourth quarter, our, uh, in our forecast, the occupancy rate will resume to the same level as the fourth quarter. So uh, that means the year-over-year year decrease, no decrease anymore, uh, even be a little higher than the last year's occupancy rate. And during the whole year, uh, our ADR the level remains uh, at, at nearly the same as the last year. Uh, that's from our experience from the first quarter of 2020. So accordingly, the revenue will reach the same level as one year ago uh, until the fourth quarter. So we think. Uh, uh, we, uh, in our forecast is very conductive, and uh, in line with this assumption, that we achieve the, uh, the, 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 the decline of 10% to 15% uh, of revenues uh, for this year. Okay, Justin, that, uh, let me add one more thing. And uh, even though, uh, you know, so it's the first time I looked at the number, I find that that is a little bit probably uh, aggressive, but later we looked at it because we also have um, the addition of uh, new hotels uh, adding to the pipeline so and being opened especially we have accumulated them more from the year end of last year and uh, you can see our pipeline has been doubled from the uh, year ago the Q4 2018 so with those hotels being opened and put into the actions so believe I believe the overall uh, we should be able to uh, and achieve that number. With regard to your second question about, uh, you know, the second part of this question, whether we're going to consider additional uh, fee waivers. And so our fee basically waived uh, certain fees for our franchisees, and that uh, waiver is um, um, going to, you know, uh, going to be, uh, com you know, finished and terminated expires and with the lift of the shelter in place. And so we, uh, I think we are in pretty lucky in the past year or the two that we have always convinced our franchisee to be conservative and not to be too aggressive. So a, mo a, you know, a lot of our franchisees position, financial position wise, and you know, are very good. So we expect our franchisee will recover also very, very rapidly from um, the crisis. So with regard to the second question, the cost side, and there's a few issues there that from the, the, 
I will have uh, Selena to give the detailed and these uh, each items the roughly the the numbers. But our core performer core cost really have not increased uh, that much, and uh, we're trying to be um, sensitive to the last year, especially with a tougher year because there's so many brands popping up in China, and some of them already closed down. And but there is uh, you know the um, talent acquisitions and overall cost, including the property levels, the rent cost, and the, are all you know are all rising. You know the world were rising pretty fast at the uh, towards the end of last year. So created a really a resistance, and the two for both our development as well as our cost. Uh, we also have another element income that really need, did not. Calculated in the core EBITDA or core, you know, net that is um, our interest income um, because we finance a certain operations to the key and uh, the uh, uh, performing the key and the best franchisees, and so we think that's a part of the uh, you know really good a combination of the tools. And both to get some of the good income for the stable income for the company, as well as supporting the franchisees to uh, expand those qualified and those quality franchisees. Um, but I believe I don't believe the interest and in all those income are included in the normal operation, you know, operating incomes. And that itself also has an element of um, legal underwriting additional cost. Incurring that that's part of the you know part of the um, legal underwriting costs in addition to the acquisition, uh, the merge and acquisition cost. And uh, as uh, um, Selena also mentioned to you, that uh, we have to uh, write off because we have a small. I uh, think that, that we have a, a mezzanine loan. We have a. Uh, finance loan to uh, one of the uh, brand that they catering to the railroad food caterings, and the, due to the um, uh, the crisis, I think the food business is there over there and the suffered. So our uh, uh, finance department, our auditor, decided to write it off. So uh, detailed number, I will leave uh, that to um, uh, uh, you know to Selena. Selena. Thank you, Alex. Uh, 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 to, to Justin, so can you uh, may I ask? Can you uh, repeat your question for the detailed member, uh, so that I can uh, clarify this question? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Maybe just quickly on the given your uh, just the EBITDA margin was down year over year. Um, obviously, I think uh, Alex also mentioned some. Um, some one-off items that included, uh, like writing off something, and then also the M&A costs, expensing on these. So can I just check um, on on a like-for-like -like basis or, or core basis, what should be the um, the, the margin? Uh, and actually, in 2020, uh, what would the margins outlook be? Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, just as I just explained, I uh, guess uh, the two uh, two reasons. The first one is the uh, that uh, that 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 uh, the provision that's due to the outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, so that is the uh, uh, that is uh, about uh, uh, five. Per that is about four percent uh, impacted for uh, uh, the EBITDA margin. And uh, the one-time fees uh, that is uh, uh, about one uh, percent. Yes, uh, uh, of the impact of the EBITDA margin. Yes. Oh, great, thank you. Maybe the, just the last part of the uh, question is about M&A. Um, just the the adjusting, the, the, uh, just the, correct, correct. The third question, um, uh, we want to give you, the, uh, you know, to give you uh, a color on that. Uh, last year, what happened is that um, uh, we generated a, an operating cash flow of roughly about 500 million. You know, it's a ballpark number, so don't quote me. And so we have um, made roughly 1.2 billion uh, investment. Um, that variety con consists of we pay the dividends, and we also um, uh, 
you know, invested in uh, some key uh, strategic located property hotels near the um, uh, railway station. And then um, we also made uh, an, uh, two investments and actually um, in the uh, one is the one is the Ginkgo, one is the uh, our new century Kaiyuan hotels, and then um, and then the the first portions we made, also the two of the merger acquisition with Argyle and with Urban, and finally we made a number of invest you know the, the financial assistance to franchisees. So combined, we have you know 1.2 billion dollars. I think all of them are producing great results. We're producing great results for the company in the future. And uh, even with uh, so with that, that our cash balance I think dropped from 2.3 to 1.8 billion uh, because we tapped into the cash we have. And uh, considering the situation and the current situation, I think we're glad we were not as that aggressive as last year in both on the property development as well as in you know, hotel development as well as the um, acquisitions and so this gave us a, a um, still and uh, uh, resource to evaluate and we are currently evaluating and uh, several smaller and complement complementary geographically and brand wise opportunities and that uh, yes we are going to systematically to evaluate uh, but we also think that uh, the um, uh, China and uh, overseas are kind of a very different uh, because I think that um, our uh, system, economic system, and the support and uh, that we receive over there, a lot of, um, I think it, it, will, it will be a while, I think, before we see, uh, you know, great opportunities or service. I think right now there are some. Uh, but I think was still people are looking to see whether there is the recovery speed. If the recovery speed is a slower, and there will be more, I, I do believe there will be more opportunities out there. But we want to be disciplined as uh, as always, and we also want to be disciplined. And because um, a lot of our shareholders even expected some of the dividend. So we looked at our income before this year, the revenue and expense, and we looked at the um, uh, the cash flow. We think we are also able to continue to stick to our stick to our dividend policy. So that's the. Uh, and I also welcome everybody online. You know, uh, because you have you may have a lot of leads to recommend to us. And if there are um, targets that can create win-win situation for us. So Justin, thank you so much for all those wonderful questions. Thank you. The next question comes from Praveen Chowdhury of Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for taking my question. Hi, Alex. Hi, Selena. Thanks for the presentation and answering those questions. Um, I have two questions. First one is, could you talk about the current demand situation after uh, the coronavirus outbreak, especially in March or in April? I'm trying to understand what part of the occupancy increase is coming from business versus leisure. Also, I want to understand how much is this for uh, the occupancy increases because of the local demand, like people who live in the same city, because we are seeing very little uh, train increases or, or the transportation helping people to go from one place to another. So just want to understand what's driving that demand come back and uh, uh, so that we can understand when we did eventually get to normalize. Uh, the second question is more related to the urban and Argyle acquisition. Wanted to understand uh, a lot more about urban. We thought that they had 700 hotels. So question is, do they have the same franchise rate, take rate of 7-8%? What percentage of the pipeline increase is because of urban? So anything you can talk about urban impact on both pipeline revenue as well as EBITDA for fourth quarter um, so we can model it properly. That will be very useful. Thank you so much. Thanks, Praveen. Uh, the the, the uh, demand, I'll elaborate a little bit, and then uh, Selena can add on top of that. And uh, you are uh, correct. Uh, 
by looking at the traffic, a lot of our demand are continuously to be uh, for those uh, travel for those workers and um, resume back to the job to the factories to the companies. So uh, um, and that's created a, a, a the major demand for our hotels, and that is a. Uh, one of the reasons a lot of our, hotel, our hotels have so-called self-quarantine room, that is when you travel from diff, uh, travel from different cities, and uh, you should uh, typically the company will recommend you stay in a place for 14 days. And there are also some local uh, demand that the intro we call the intro province, intro cities. And so those are the two uh, primary and uh, demand for our hotels. So leisures have not yet, other than in certain uh, leisure locations we know. For instance, uh, you probably read the story in Huangshan uh, when the uh, government opened the resort, the, the, the no fee, and then there was really flooded with uh, the guests and our Huangshan hotels you know, have been full occupancy. And then I think for, for for the fear of um, overcrowded and there will be rest there were restrictions, then the occupancy dropped. And so the uh, leisure side, I think, will be a while, and until people are more comfortable of traveling, or even government will be encouraging that. I think that's basically a policy and behavior of both of the issues. And so I will, with that, that I will uh, I will ask whether Selena Selena jump in if you have anything to add. And then we are, um, the, the second issue, and I'll have uh, we regarding the urban and also Argyle's consolidation. I will, uh, you know, ask Selena to address it to you. But basically, Argyle, I think that um, the five-star luxury sector is more competitive, and the uh, the uh, earnings we really have yet see the. Um, uh, significant earning or EBITDA contributions for the R, you know for the Argyle, and so we have still uh, trying to develop that a major presence in China, and we have a good faith that, that the team is working really hard under Kevin Jones Kevin Jones leadership. Um, it is just a very very uh, the five star in terms of because that's primarily fighting uh, the new development that's slowing down. The fighting the existing inventories, and so everybody has a, uh, a pretty aggressive financial um, package and franchise term for the front for the hotel owners. Argyle um, and we consolidated in December, and so the impact is uh, not much there yet, because it's only a fraction of the quarter. And Argyle and has a, uh, a lower margin, and uh, has a lower relative lower occupancy, and so uh, this is all part of our uh, part of acquisition that we will continue to help to work, and so can improve the brand standard, the in, uh, increased occupancy, and increased ADR. And the exact that I will leave that uh, you know leave Selena to address that to you, Selena. Thank you, Alex. Uh, yeah, I'd like to share some uh, uh, observations with uh, Parvin and everybody. And for the first question, uh, if we uh, check out the occupancy rate in terms of the tiers uh, breakdown, yeah, we find that uh, in the tier one cities, um, the occupancy rate dropped the uh, greatest. And uh, for the tier three and the lower cities, and the occupancy rate is, was more stable than any other cities. And also, if we uh, analyze the occupancy rate in terms of the uh, brand segments, uh, we find that the middle scale, the middle scale segment, the occupancy rate is re, uh, uh, remained the most stable than any other uh, brand segment. And uh, the next one is the economy segment. And uh, for the middle type scale, and the rapper uh, decrease uh, was the highest. So, um, so that is the uh, uh, and the second, uh, from the operation um, uh, viewpoint, uh, we find that most of our guests are contributed from the uh, local uh, guests, uh, from our um, uh, big client and big clients. I mean the enterprises uh, surrounding our hotels. 
and uh, the travelers uh, between provinces uh, are ramping up uh, gradually. Uh, in March and the 4th, so we find the percentage of the uh, of the short distance gas and medium short distance gas, gas uh, increasing gradually. So the first second question uh, for the contributions uh, from uh, Argyle and the urban, and uh, we find that the uh, Argyle and actually the net income for Argyle was negative, so that has been, uh, there was no contribution from the uh, Argyle data. And uh, urban, we consolidated uh, urban data uh, since the December of the first quarter of last year, so its contribution was minor. Um, and in the uh, in the fourth part of 20, uh, 2020, uh, in our model, uh, the contribution of uh, Argo and the urban uh, was less. Uh, le the revenue contribution was less than three percent, and the EBITDA contribution. Uh, and we didn't uh, anticipate the EBITDA contribution to our forecast. Uh, thank you, Parvin. Yeah, yeah, in you. terms of uh, uh, Praveen, another thing that you mentioned over there, uh, out of the pipeline, about 200 of uh, roughly about uh, from the Argyle, 70, uh, you know, 70 from Argyle, that's the, um, uh, it's a, the pipeline will carry a longer time because sometimes it takes years for a hotel and the four star, five star level to mature. And then about um, uh, 200 from uh, uh, the um, uh, urban. Okay. Yes, okay. you're correct. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed the no. question. Yes, you're it's correct. okay. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful, Alex. Thank you very much, Selena. Uh, and sure. stay safe. I uh, hope everything is fine there. Thank you. Yeah, please call Selena if there is any information we have not made it clear because we want, we would like, really like to be. Um, uh, very uh, transparent uh, in, in the two, for all the transactions that we made, and that um, and for trying to be uh, uh, really disciplined in terms of um, uh, eval you know underwriting, setting up the price, setting up the uh, acquisition structure. Thanks, Praveen, and you do the same. The next question comes from Billy Yoon of Bank of America. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening, and thanks for taking my questions. Uh, I, I have some follow-up questions. Basically, um, I think we can you can you tell us more about your current occupancy? I, I mean, in terms of the distribution, um, how like when we get to fifty or sixty percent occupancy, do we see some of them at very high occupancy, but some of them are still at like let's say ten, twenty percent? Um, the reason I want to ask that is I, I, I do want to see how many of the uh, franchisees are still uh, loss-making at this point. Okay, uh, Selena, do you have that number um, that the two will share with Billy? Uh, Billy, that's a good question. I do not know what um, uh, I – at least I – uh, I did not know that uh, uh, Selena will have that number, but uh, more than happy to share with it if she didn't have it in front. Um, it's, it's not, first of all, because I looked at the number, I didn't do a, a chart. It is really um, uh, spread, you know, that uh, widespread. So there are hotels who are running uh, very high occupancies due to the certain demand. But there are also hotels running. We have three, we still have three, seven percent that is not yet opened because of the condition mm -hmm. of the local community. And so for uh, for the uh, so not every hotel is uniformly. So there's widespread uh, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. their performance. And that the certain cities had the hit hit it's the hardest. I think that is still pretty much closed down, and the, mm -hmm. some provinces not yet. And they start, you know, seeing the the business. We have so, some hotels have running at 80, 90 percent occupancy already. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. um, but but I think the ni next wave is going to be people. We think the people people's confidence. And uh, it's going to be correlated with our government, the measurement, the, the measures the government will take with the next stage and how comfortable they are um, and to lift the uh, shelter in place for each cities and provinces. So, Selena, please add 
and your um, your number if you have. Uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, yes, uh, indeed, yes. Yeah, uh, this is a very good question uh, because we observed that occupancy rate for those hotels in operation uh, will averagely distribute it. Uh, that means, for example, in tier one cities, we observed the occupancy rate uh, was about 43.4 percent. That was the lowest mm -hmm. uh, among all the tier cities. Mm -hmm. And in tier mm -hmm. two. In tier, uh, tier two cities, the occupancy rate uh, was a uh, was above forty six percent. That was a little higher mm -hmm. than that hotel in tier one cities. And in the tier mm -hmm. three and the lower cities, the occupancy rate uh, was the highest, uh, and that is above fifty two percent. So, average speaking, mm -hmm. we uh, we find that the occupancy rate among all the hotels was uh, relatively uh, uh, re relatively stable. Yes, uh, was not. Uh, uh, was, was was not impacted by only a few uh, portion of the highest occupancy uh, rate of hotels. Yeah, that is that is what mm -hmm. we observed. Yeah, and we have talked about if we analyze occupancy rate in terms of the uh, brand segment. Yes, we found that um, the middle scale hotels achieve the highest occupancy rate uh, um, than the middle top scale hotels and the economy hotels. Yeah, and also mm -hmm. that is uh, average distributed. Yeah, and uh, for okay, your question, uh, how many franchises uh, uh, are starting from the last? Uh, I'm so sorry, we haven't got the the, the, the very exact uh, and accurate number. Uh, but we, but for our past experience, uh, our break-even point for most uh, franchises uh, in the normal condition uh, was about uh, 50 to 55 percent of occupancy rate. Mm -hmm. So that means by the end of the first quarter, most of franchisees uh, uh, are reaching, were reaching, or had reached uh, the break-even point. So mm -hmm. that's why we have confidence in the second quarter. Yeah, most of our hotels and franchisees will. Um, we will we, we make profit, yes, uh, uh, more than starting from the last. Thank you for the question. I, I see. And uh, can I follow up with um, just uh, in, in terms of the, you, you mentioned uh, tier three, two, or tier three, tier four cities outperform tier one cities specifically. Uh, well, why is that? And, and also, uh, can you tell us a bit more in terms of the uh, uh, self imposed quarantine demand? A lot of people, as Alex described, uh, when they get back to work, they need to stay at a, a, a separate place uh, for safety or healthy reasons. And um, and um, roughly speaking, how how much of the demand is related to that, and how much is we see a bit of normalized business travel demand. Believe that uh, the uh, okay, uh, Selena, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to share some uh, experience from the first quarter. Uh, I think one reason, one reason uh, was due to the uh, the, the, the guest uh, the guest store. Uh, because we know the tier one in tier one cities, most of the guests in the past, most of the guests uh, came from the long distance uh, tra uh, business travelers. But in the uh, crisis, uh, most of our uh, long-term, long-distance travelers uh, 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 have, have no chance to, to travel anymore because of the traffic restriction uh, and, uh, given by our government to, to protect our safety. So nowadays, most of the country rate uh, um, it was uh, con contributed from the short uh, distance customers and uh, uh, also some surrounding and uh, some community and guests. So that's why the, the hotels in tier three and the lower cities uh, achieved a more stable occupancy rates than that uh, hotels in the tier one uh, cities. And uh, for your for, for your concerns that. Uh, because the, uh, we have mentioned some uh, of our hotels, uh, the occupancy rate uh, came from the uh, the workers that returned back to their work position, and that the, and the, those big enterprises were uh, distributed on, not only in big cities but also uh, distributed in some tier two and the tier three and the four cities, and for some big size enterprises, 
uh, as we know, um, some big size enterprises has moved from the tier one cities to tier three and the lower cities. That, so that's why uh, most work uh, uh, most workers return to their work position, and that contributes to our occupancy rate in the hotels in tier three and other cities. So that's what we observed from the first quarter's operation viewpoint. Uh, thank you, Alex. Billy, that uh, the um, my I do did, sorry I did not get the number. I don't have the exact number, but my understanding we don't clearly in the system uh, that uh, marked every single room and uh, special types of room called a uh, self quarantine room, and so um, most of the uh, uh, we're right now having a new you know the health safety and the uh, hygiene protocols. We treated every guest coming in as if you know that the self quarantine. So we also limit the access, limit uh, our contact between the uh, from you know between the hotel employee or and our guests. So uh, and we also send the you know during the period and we send the food to the room and we clean a separate schedule. And so we almost treated every every room over there as if it has a self quarantine. And so the majority of them are for travelers, and regardless whether they are required by the government or not, or by the local uh, businesses or not. And uh, secondly, I just want to emphasize uh, Selena's point. Uh, that is, um, the intro provin provincial traveling right now, I think, the, is a major. I think the is a, is a major portion of the business, and across. Inter on the cross provincial uh, provincial travelings right now is still uh, less unless you go back to work with the uh, so called uh, I think there's a proof of the requirement from the countries from from the factories or from the companies then your uh, um, apartment complex the administrator will take that or will you know, allow you to uh, to travel with us in the past. I think that the restrictions is lifted, but but cross provincial traveling right now still, uh, I wouldn't I say that um, um, slow and uh, not totally encouraged, um, and uh, very soon I, I hopefully the rest of the world this uh, coronavirus crisis will be contained that, that will lift the concerns of the of the China government. Of our government, then this um, travel ban or travel uh, advisory will be less. So um, I believe that that's the um, uh, what our assessment. But I do, on top of that, I, w I want to make a um, another um, a comments regarding the demand. We also, from the green tree side, our demand is not only the travelers but also demand for franchise. Uh, we believe uh, the demand for franchise demand for this year will be healthy, and because uh, we have more independent hotels or some other branded uh, and the hotel owner, the hotel owners may need, you know, to re-examine their cost structures, and uh, may need to um, find a hotel operator who is able to help them financially. So our first quarter of a development speed, actually, uh, considering the um, shelter in place, and uh, it's pretty high. And our first quarter development and uh, is very high speed from my point of view. And uh, that the um, we develop more than three, you know, the, the three digits numbers of the hotels. And that's also because of the restructuring of the uh, development. I think last year, the uh, last Q4, um, a couple of a number of factors in the Q4, and we uh, um, we didn't open as I planned, scheduled. It's um, uh, a little bit disappointing to the management to my side. We acknowledge that because we're about short of 50, due to um, uh, due to um, several reasons and that's just, just that the uh, property cost and development costs are really very high 
it takes a little bit longer time. Secondly, that um, the spring festival is uh, going very, you know, that uh, faster than before. So people in the past then try to open that to speed up, and they have to slow down, taking that, that can into take that into consideration. Open probably afterwards, and. Um, so and the third due to many many emerging brands so um uh, that we should be able to more than make up um the uh, shortage for the uh, q four so that we see the demand uh, we're really glad to see the demand uh, of going back and pretty uh, strong for our hotel brand and so as I mentioned to you that we actually uh, um in the first quarter. Even in light of the all the uh, shelter in place, we didn't have, we did, we couldn't travel. So still, uh, you just that the uh, green tree alone, we developed, you know, uh, more than what we expected. And so that's the uh, other demand. So we we think that uh, we have a healthy, you can't, we really have a stable and a healthy uh, environment for green tree for forestry development hotels for this year. And we think the economy is fundamentally strong. The government has been making those smart policies. <laughs> and we can, excuse me, and we can have another, you know, um, another strong performance. And if, if I may, uh, the next question comes from Bruce Me of UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks Alex and Selena for taking my questions and hope everyone stays safe and healthy. Uh, I only have one small question. So uh, in terms of the speed of, of recovery, so in which city tier have you seen faster improvement in business travel demand so far in April? And which hotel segment do you expect to pick up more rapidly in the future? Thank you. So uh, for the uh, I will address and then Selena you add as Selena pointed out Bruce that um, uh, we think that that the um, tier three tier four and cities uh, those recovery should be the quickest because the intra provincial restrict you know the travelers is a, it is a pretty much I think that um, already started and uh, cross provincials uh, provincial tra traveling is going to be um, a later stage, and the shorter distance uh, travels happens first. Secondly, that the hotels we have that near the um, uh, where the near the uh, railway stations, and near the hospitals, and near the schools, and uh, near uh, logistics centers, and those the ones that we see them coming back very quickly, and they'll recover the uh, quickest. And uh, that with the leisure or any kinds of um, a higher concentrated, uh, probably um, uh, leisure related hotels, probably the last. Do you have anything else to add, uh, Selena? Uh, thank you, Alex, and thank you for my question. Uh, actually, yes, we uh, we thought, we think that the hotels in the tier two and tier three and other cities, other cities. Uh, we recover uh, more quickly than the, that and the other hotels in the tier one cities, not only from the viewpoint of the occupancy rate, but also from the ADR uh, viewpoint. Uh, because because we observed that the, the room rate in tier three cities, the UV growth uh, uh, was uh, was uh, minus, and that means that in tier one, tier one cities, the uh, the decrease of ADR was the highest. And um, the same trend as the uh, occupancy rate in tier one cities, and in tier two cities, the uh, ADR and uh, the decrease of the ADR uh, was a little better than that of tier one cities, and the tier three and other cities, the room rate uh, was nearly as the same as the last year. Uh, so that uh, that that means that, um, nowadays the more people are concerned about the room rate, especially for the business travelers and short distance travelers. And so that's why we think the hotels in the middle scale and in the tier two and three cities will recover more quickly than the other hotels. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alex and Selena. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to 
Selena Yang for any closing remarks. Oh, thank you, Operator. Uh, in closing, on behalf of the entire Green Tree Management Team, we thank you for your interest and participation in today's call. If you require any further information or any interesting visiting art in China, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you, everybody. The conference has now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect.